All right, I want to I want to tie one of my cripple patterns. Um, I'm a little weird with my dry flies. I kind of like some of the weird stuff instead of the just traditional duns, um, whether it's an emerger or cripple. I, I just feel like I get a lot more action when I'm throwing something that, you know, just looks a little different. So what this is going to be is a size 14 Cahill cripple. And they're pretty easy to tie. I think they're a lot easier to tie than your regular <clears throat> standard dry flies. Thread-wise, I'm using 18 knot nano silk. Um, incredibly strong, does not really have a whole lot of buildup at all. And, and these are tied a little differently than the way you would tie a standard dry. And what I normally do is not lay down a thread base, but with my cripples, I do. And the reason why is pretty simple. We're going to bring that back to around the two-thirds point of the hook after laying down a base. And the reason why is I like to get the, the, the tail down first. And for the tail, if I can get a feather out of here. I don't know if you guys have ever seen these or not, but this is the Nature Spirit Spade Hackle. One of my favorite tailing materials. It's basically just feathers off the side of a cape. They're, they're really, really stiff, really long. Great for tailing. Although I haven't really been able to find them recently. I don't really know if they've discontinued them or not. I hope not because they're probably my favorite dry fly tailing material. Okay, so once you get a chunk of that taken out, we'll get that tied in again at about the two-thirds point. That looks pretty good there. I don't go too crazy with measuring it. I don't build the same type of taper with my cripples that I do with my dry flies. I just It just doesn't seem like it has as much importance. As I said, I like my cripples to be kind of messy, just like my emergers. I like my emergers to be messy, my cripples to be messy. You know, most of the other flies I tie, you know, I try to get them clean. I try to get them the way that I want, but cripples and emergers and all that stuff. I, I really want ugly, messy, straggly. I've always liked my dries. I'm just trying to find a good piece of material here. What I'm going to do for the body, uh, just these light Cahill turkey biots. Make sure they're turkey. Uh, the turkey biots are the larger ones. The goose biots are a little bit smaller. They're, goose biots are good for bodies on smaller flies. Uh, but if you're on a size 14 or something along those lines, you're going to want a turkey biot. Now, as far as tying this in goes, there is a ridge. See how that bends a certain way? There's a ridge on the top of these things. And what you want to do is you want to tie it so that the ridge is on top. Because what essentially we're going to do is when we start wrapping the body, we're basically going to flip this biot over. And we want the ridge part to kind of line up and, and give it that segmented look that we're looking for. And the way you do that is you tie that with the ridge point up. And I'm going to build, I'm not going to go as detailed as a dry fly, but I'm going to build up a little bit of a taper here. Basically the way I do that is I go a little bit down, back up, then I go a little bit further. Try to build as nice as smooth a taper as I can. Okay, now we'll get our thread out of the way. Now, as I said before, when we're tying in that biot, you want that tough ridge on top because what we're going to do is when I start to wrap this, notice how I'm going to take it and fold it over. So now that ridge is on the left of my biot. I give it that first wrap. Get that latched in with my pliers. And we're going to go touching wraps all the way up. And you can kind of see what I mean, how that ridge is what's going to develop that segmented look that we're shooting for. If you tie it in backwards, you, you'll still be able to wrap it, but you're going to get a weird look. Um, you'll be able to notice pretty quickly that you're not getting the look that you want. But if you want to nail that first time, remember you want the ridge facing up and then flip it over when you start wrapping it. 
One of the things that I like about tying for YouTube instead of the short 60 second videos I do for Instagram is you can kind of take your time and relax. You know, some of those videos, if you want, if you want the short videos to come out good, you want to try to not keep the real thing too long because you're going to condense it down. So you kind of race against the clock, but with a fly like this, you can relax and tie. It's much more relaxing. All right. So what I also like to do is take some of this light brown possum dub, very light little tuft of it. And on my cripples, I like to get just a little bit of a thorax to kind of mimic, you know, maybe that fly struggling to get out. Not much of one, just a little brown little thorax right there. And we're good to go. Now, Normally, on a regular dry, you tie in the wings and then get the hackle in after the fact. Cripples are a little different. So notice I don't have anything on the front of the hook right now. So what I'm going to do for the front, if I can find a good piece here with some length, it looks like right there. What I'm going to use, a pretty cool material that I use in a lot of different ways, especially on emergers, is the CDC Puffs from Wapsi. So... The full CDC feathers, you can do a lot of different things with them. I, I like the puffs for stuff like this because um, of the way that they, the way you can splay them up and, and do different things with them. I've tied posts on parachute patterns with them. That's kind of hard, but it is what it is. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to basically just take this, pull that feather forward, get as much of that material out there. And you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to double that up, actually. Pull out a second one of these puffs here. Actually, I normally double it up. I just kind of I haven't tied one of these in a while. I kind of forgot that I normally do that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to, in my hand, line these up as best I can. They don't have to be exact. doesn't really matter. Remember, it's a cripple, so screw it up all you want. There's something about that straggly look that I think when fish see it, I think they immediately think something's wrong, something's not right with that bug, and I think that it triggers them to feed a little bit. So I'm going to tie this in with that facing forward. I want a little bit more. Actually... What we'll do is we'll go all the way to the eye because it's going to be a lot easier wrapping this back than it is forward. So I'll continue to tighten that up. That's about the tough that I want. Remember, start at the eye, not at the back. I know I'm making some mistakes here, but I haven't tied one of these in a while. That way you can hold it tight and bring your wraps all the way back. Good. All right. So hackle-wise, what I'm going to do is I'm going to use a piece of this light ginger off of a whiting light ginger cape. And this is off of it. A lot of the stuff I have is, you know, silver. I got a couple of platinum capes. I got a lot of the stuff that's, you know, most would call high grade or whatever you want to call it. This is just a pro grade feather. Uh, and I'll tell you right now. Don't sleep on the pro-grade stuff. You know, just because something is gold-rated or platinum-rated or something like that, yeah, it means the feathers are longer. But honestly, it doesn't mean that the hackle's any better. And to be honest with you, I've grown to actually prefer the pro-grade. Um, the reason why I prefer the pro-grade is just, you know, with the shorter uh, with the shorter quills, sometimes I see a lot less feather twisting. And I don't know, I just think the pro-grade comes out a lot better. Okay, so what I've done is I took a little bit off of the one side of the feather just to make sure that your first couple wraps lay flat exactly the way that you want. I don't strip both sides of the feather. We're not looking for Instagram likes here. We want to catch fish. So let's go and get that snipped off. Okay, now, 
Next part is pretty simple. We'll fold that back. We'll get some wraps here going at it. This is a long enough feather where I don't really think I need any hackle pliers or anything like that. And again, this is off of a pro grade cape. So you're talking about some, some really, really good feather length off of a pro grade cape. And it's funny how I commented on the feather twist, and I'm getting a little bit of twisting here right now. But you know what? On a cripple, I really don't care. And we'll pull that CDC up. This is the tough part. You kind of have to pull that up and grip the feather with your other fingers and get that locked in. It's a little bit of a tough finish, but once you get a couple of wraps, you're good. Well... Kind of dig into that as much as we can. We'll get the excess snipped off there. Got a couple of rogue fibers here. But we'll go and fold that back. We'll get our finish wraps on there, if I can find my whip finisher. Peel that CDC back. Get some finish wraps in there. Snip that off. I don't want to catch any of my hackle. Good. And then we're going to take our puffs here. We're going to pull those tight. And we're just going to snip those off straight. So we got a little bubble back there. And that's pretty much it. You know, it, when you look at it, it might not have some of the features that you would normally, you know, associate with a, a very well-tied fly. You know, we want, we didn't make sure that the hackle was straight. We didn't really go crazy with the with the uh, whip finish or anything like that to try to get that nice and clean. As I said, the goal of this was to be a little bit messy. You you want to show the fish a, a little bit of chaos there to kind of come off as uh, something that's not quite right with an emerging bug. And as you can see in the bottom view, see, it's just a lot of craziness, you know, and the uh, the biot representing the shuck, it, it's, it's a lot of chaos to show that, hey, this bug is not exactly coming off correctly. So if, if you as a fish waste your energy to come up to the surface, it's not a done that's just going to take off on you and you're going to have wasted that energy. That's it's a, it's a food item that you're going to get if you come after it. And I think that triggers a lot more strikes. Uh, that's why I like cripples. I like cripples. I like uh, parachutes that sit a little bit deeper. I like emergers. You know, I do fish duns, but you know, these are the types of dries that I like more than anything because I think that they add that little extra effect. So that's pretty much it. Any questions or anything, reach out. But it's a great pattern. You can mix up the colors, match any mayfly you want. Uh, great pattern to fish.